Hi, and welcome to Indifferent Curls and Budget Constraints. So far, I hope that you have enjoyed the uh, study of economics as much as we have. Uh, if you have not, you know, fret not, okay, because there are more interesting topics that are coming along. Uh, economics is uh, essentially quite a, a complicated uh, s- uh, subject to study, but uh, if you take the interest and uh, spend a little bit of time in it, I'm sure, you know, all of us can be good in it. So, in different curves and budget constraints. Okay, this is the mind map for today. Again, just a little reminder. Okay, go download this okay, on the website okay, for your revision purposes. Okay, now, what is a budget constraint? This is a budget constraint. It is a combination of goods and services obtainable by a given income. Okay? So these are the keywords. Okay, obtainable is not. Okay, so these are the keywords. Okay, and income is also known as I. Okay, the capital letter I. Some people even call it Y. Okay, so like this. Okay, um, think about the PPF. Okay, the PPF is the production possibility frontier. Okay, so it is also known as the consumption possibility frontier because whatever we produce, we will consume. Assuming in economy, that's how that works. Now, graphically, this is what a uh, budget constraint looks like. Okay, I know it looks like a lot of things, but uh, don't worry. Okay, we'll break this down slowly. Okay, imagine, imagine that I have a nominal income. Nominal means in terms of numbers. Okay, of one thousand dollars. Okay, and there's only two branded goods available, which is D and G, and Louis Vuitton. So D and G cost me fifty dollars. One D and G. Okay, maybe it's a handbag or something. One D and G handbag cost me fifty dollars. One LV handbag cost me a hundred dollars. So the price of D and G, which we will let this be X. So the price of X is fifty dollars. The price of Y will be a hundred dollars. So, how many DNG bags can I buy in total? If I'm only gonna buy DNG, yeah, DNG is my favorite. Okay, I only like DNG, so I'm gonna spend only on DNG. It'll be one thousand dollars divided by fifty, so that will be twenty. Okay, and if I'm gonna spend all my money on only only on LV, okay, I will be only able to buy ten. So. 10 over here and 20 over here. Let's say if I want to have a little mix, maybe I want to have like a 1 LV and uh, everything else will be DNG. So I'll be somewhere here. So maybe I want to give in a little bit more. I want to have uh, maybe a half of my money on DNG and half of my money on LV and I'll be somewhere here. So if we connect all these points, we get something like a PPF, you know. So this is the budget constraint. Okay. And 10 and 20 is also known as my real income. What is real income? Real income is basically my income measured in terms of goods, the quantity of goods that I can purchase. This is also the most, uh, you know, is the most relevant way of uh, understanding how rich we are, you know, is how much we can spend our money. So, you know, we watch the news and we complain that, you know, oh, uh, real income is dropping. So, basically, it means that, uh, yeah, people's, people's salary may be the same, maybe people will be earning the same amount of salary, but since prices are going up, so they realize they can buy less, so def- lesser, therefore, their re- real income drops. Okay, so let's go through a little bit of the uh, notations over here in uh, this 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 uh, budget constraint over here okay here we go notations now so you got your y and x axis okay quantity of y over quantity of x okay and this is your budget constraint now uh, this point over here okay okay I tell you what let's go in a clockwise direction okay, you start here all right so this is my real income the total amount of nominal money okay nominal income divided by the price of x okay so this is my nominal income Okay, move clockwise here. This is the price line. The, the 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 angle, the gradient of the price line is essentially price of X divided by the price of Y. Okay, this is the initial bundle that the consumer has chosen, which is identified by A. Okay, we will go through the indifference curve soon. This is the initial bundle of Y that the consumer has chosen, which is also derived from A. This is real income measured in terms of Y. And this is our indifference curve. The indifference curve looks like this, and it's denoted by this thing called mu naught. 
Okay, uh, A is our initial equilibrium. Okay, so I hope this is done. Okay, next thing is um, the indifference curve. What is the indifference curve? Okay, the indifference curve is a graph that shows different bundles of goods x0 and y0, x1, uh, x1 and y1, x2 or y and y2. Okay, that shows these bundles of goods show that the consumer is indifferent. Okay, between these bundles. So indifferent basically means he's neither good or neither bad. So he's yeah lah, he's uh satisfied, you know, he's like uh I don't care whether I've got this much or that much. So it's basically a map of preferences that he would be okay with all. Okay? So let me show you this over here. Now, okay, assuming that uh, we have got two prizes for DNG and two prizes for LV. So that gives us two kinds of budget constraints. Okay, so this is how the indifference curve uh, was created. Okay, you compare points A and points B. Which one will I want to be? I will want to be on point A. Why? Because point A is higher. I can choose more. Okay, A is more than B. If I look at C and D, which one will I choose? I will choose C. Okay, because C is higher, C is more. E, E is indifferent because the both budget lines, they, they, they intersect here. Okay, so that means, yeah, everything is the same here. So, when you connect all these points together, you get a little curve. And that's how the indifference curve was formed. Okay, so, what it means to be indifferent is basically this. If I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, I am equally happy. Okay, so that's what it means by being indifferent, okay, uh, between all these different bundles of goods. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the indifference curve. The slope of the indifference curve, alright, is called the marginal rate of substitution. Okay, so we have an indifference curve over here. And how do we measure the gradients of the curve? We just draw tangents, okay, so basically you just put your ruler over here and the thing touches. You draw one straight line, and then you find the gradient over there. So that is the gradient of the slope. Okay, so the gradient of the slope is calculated by dividing the uh, change in y by the change in x. Okay, so this is your gradient over here. Over here, right? But before that, I need to look at this. Now, if I give up one unit of x, okay, how much of y am I going to get? So we take the change in x multiplied by the marginal utility of x. So what is marginal utility? Marginal utility is the usage gained or lost due to an increase or decrease in consumption. So I have one pen. You give me one pen. Right, so the change in x is one. So I got one pen. But uh, I can have many usages for this pen. I can draw graphs. I can decorate my room, I can vandalize stuff, so that is my utility. Okay, so everybody's utility, you know, d differs from different people because we have got different usage of things, so that's why this exists. So, it will be the change in x multiplied by the marginal utility of x equals to the change in y. Why is it equal to the change in y? Because when I give up one x, then I can get some y, right? the concept of opportunity cost multiplied by the marginal utility of y and I throw all these things around ding dong ding dong and I'll get dy over dx okay equals to marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y that means okay that the gradient of the slope the gradient of the indifference curve is the marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y okay so that's the slope of the uh, indifference curve. And here's another thing. Indifference curves cannot intersect. Why? Okay, you just take a look at this over here. Now we have got two indifferent curves. It doesn't make sense. Okay, A is fine. Okay, I prefer A and B equally as good. Okay, so if you compare these two, I like A and B as much. Okay, I like C and A, A and C as much. Well, I mean, the definition of the indifference curve has been made very clear to us. We are indifferent between these bundles of goods. So if I am equally fine having A or B, 
and I'm also equally fine as having A or C, it means that I should be equally fine as having C and B. But that makes no sense because B is more than A, therefore I'm being irrational. So that is why indifference curves cannot intersect. Okay, it either goes higher or lower. Okay, so the higher up my different curves go, the happier I am. Why? Because I'm gaining more. Okay, so when we combine these two together, okay, over here, I hope you can see. Alright, okay, when we combine the two together, we get this. We have the budget constraint, and okay, there will be one point, okay, where the slope of the price line will be the same as the slope of the indifference curve which is over here at point A okay at point A we can see that the marginal utility of X over the marginal utility of Y is equals to PX over PY so that means that it is tangent so A is the tangent point at which the uh, indifference curve meets the indif uh, the indifference curve meets the budget constraint for this yellow color indifference curve over here, B1, B2, you realize that the gradients are not the same. And it can be seen over here in these equations. Okay, so the consumer is not maximizing his utility at points B1 nor B2. Okay, at this green color, this green indifference curve over here, okay, we are the happiest, it's the highest, but it is unattainable. It is not realistic. Therefore, the budget constraint acts as a, a controlling kind of a force you know to the consumer as to how much he can consume and the consumer is maximizing his utility given his level of income given the prices at point A therefore it means that if this guy goes out and buy X not amount of X and Y not amount of Y he is very very happy okay Thank you very much. Hope you have a nice day.